Well, greetings all, it's Max, and we're back. Welcome to Just Playing Crypto. I know it's been a while since I've done anything. Um, I can't keep up with the crypto channel, and I do run multiple channels. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about crypto gaming, because, you know, it's more or less a, a brand new industry um, with several advantages over traditional gaming, and the biggest one being, you know, this whole idea of playing to earn and and all of that, but really it's about uh, owning your in-game assets. So if you spend a lot of time in-game, like the old MMOs where be people play, you know, 10, 16, 20 hours a day to build their characters and they have all this stuff, you know, and then a patch comes out and everything they have is worthless. Well, with a, a play-to-earn NFT-based game, every time that you're doing something, you're always building and adding to your character. In this case, in God's Unchained, you're adding to your decks uh, people who aren't familiar with Gods Unchained, it's a card game uh, system, which is basically, it is a full game. Now, a lot of uh, blockchain-based games out there, you may have heard of, like Sandbox and uh, Decentraland, and there's a, a whole host of thousands of worthless games out there for people to invest in that will never be anything, okay? Investing in these things is really not a good idea at this point, Um Sandbox and, and Decentraland, because they're the first movers, are not a terribly bad investment. They're in the top 50 coins overall. Um, and there is big, big, big industry money invested in those. <clears throat> so the odds of them going to zero is zero because there's just too much money involved in them. But you have these smaller plays. And out of all of them, I've tried several of them. Most of them are garbage. Gods Unchained is close to a finished project, and it seems like it's pretty good. And what I've come to the conclusion as my recent um, for some recent things that happened in this game is that this game was actually probably fully complete as your standard straightforward card game, just like uh, whatever the Blizzard has has a has a game uh, that's a card based game. And then, you know, there's some other ones out there. Magic the Gathering is one. And I think that what they did here was they just kind of tacked a blockchain on it to try and. You know, then they wouldn't have to compete with Blizzard or whatever it may be. It's not a bad game. It's not a bad game by any means, but this is advertised as being a, uh, you own your stuff. Uh, you can play for free, and the more time you put in, you can you can earn things and trade them on the marketplace and uh, earn coins. In this case, it's God's tokens is what you... Uh, <clears throat> is what you would earn for this, and it's no different than most other things, is they, they create coins out of nothing uh, out of thin air and then they sell them on an exchange to players and that's kind of how they fund themselves um, and that's how a lot of projects when they begin that's just kind of how it has to be in order to build the economy that is how you have to do it but where it gets sketchy is the fact that you never with the with the gods unchanged the reason that I'm saying it's bait and switch I, I personally believe that it's outright fraud what this game does in that you never actually truly own anything in, in the Gods Unchained game. Um, they say you mint an FTs. Now, see, I'm not a, I don't keep up with Gods Unchained Twitter. I don't, I'm not on their Discord. I'm just a guy who's been playing on and off for eight months or so and kind of get the gist of the game. Um, you play, you get these core cards that kind of everybody gets um, just by playing the game. You, you kind of level up and you open up decks and you get cards and, then there's tournaments on the weekends where you can get better cards or the new release cards or this and that. Um, and then the thing is, is once you get a few of them, you can forge these cards and create uh, an NFT version of the card that I guess would go in your wallet. And the idea as it is presented is that that card then is yours and you own it and you can do what you want with it. But the other thing that that insinuates is that that card won't change. But that's not that's not the way it is. The God's Unchained dev team will change any card at a moment's notice. Even your NFTs get changed. So do you truly actually own your NFTs? Uh, the answer is no, you don't. You don't own anything in this game. Um, it says here, if you can't sell your items, you don't own them. Uh, in 2020, players spent $74 billion <clears throat> on in-game in items. And players received zero dollars. It all went to the game companies. That's not true. Um, there are plenty of games out there, even Warcraft, where people trade gear and equipment and items and gold and all that stuff. There is an entire player economy based around this. Um, so that is not at all true. 
But here we go, true ownership for players. Unlike other free-to-play games, Gods Unchained gives you complete ownership. No, it does not. You lie. You lie. Complete ownership over your in-game items. Collect rare cards, build your deck, and sell your cards to other players. Now, in my mind, complete ownership means that when I get a card, receive a card, I earn a card, I purchase a card, that that card will not be changed, and that is locked. Okay? And understandably that these games, of course, they create a series of cards and they push them out and they see if they're overpowered, how, how the gameplay balances, and some cards are going to need tweaks. That's, that's just how these games are. But when you have cards like core cards and things that have been around for years, I don't know how long this has been out, but I've been playing eight months and the core cards really haven't changed. When you have cards that have been out there for that long and then they go back and go change them, even if it's an NFT, they go into your wallet and change your NFT that you spent money to mint. Then you don't really own it, do you? You don't own it. You're just renting it. You're just renting this crap um, from God's Unchained devs. And the most hilarious part about this is the, uh, the blockchain that they started that they create these um, NFTs through is called Immutable. I don't think they know what Immutable means. Immutable means you cannot change it. So anyways, true ownership for players is a 100% outright lie. 100%. It's not true ownership. So, you got play and collect, win cards by playing games. Yep, trade. You can do all these things and you can ascend with your perfect deck. You can never have a perfect deck because, um, let's see, there's eight gods or nine gods or something. And each... Each god plays differently and has their own cards. And I, you know, as little as I play, I only took a, a nature deck and worked on the things that I purchased and um, used my what tokens that they give you, you know, for winning tournaments and things. And just built that deck because that's all I have time to do. And then I come to after a, not playing for a month and come in and all of my cards are changed. Um, don't know if I can bring this up, but... We go in here, um, and we go to my decks. Go into my decks. And you can see here, this is my, I rebuilt my nature deck, but I think you get 30 cards. Yeah, 30 cards in a deck. And my deck would only had 22 when I came back into game. And as you can see here, I built a, a, a paladin deck and, uh, you know, a death that these different gods, you can see that they're all less than 30 because they changed the core cards. You know, I don't have anything really but core cards and a couple of things that I, you know, purchased with the in-game points they give you and, you know, some gods tokens that they give you for participation, more or less with awards. But you can see how many cards they change. It's not like down by one or two or things that they had to that was just urgent for them to alter is like they completely shuffled the deck. And this is what companies do like Blizzard. To keep people on the hamster wheel, right? So where you have to go spend more money on God's tokens, you have to spend more money on Immutable X, you have to spend more money to try and rebuild your deck back to what it was before they made all of these changes. It's the hamster wheel of death, okay? And this is what blockchain games are there and designed to avoid, is when you actually earn something in game, you're supposed to actually earn something in game, not be on a hamster wheel. But no, if they can go into your wallet and change your NFTs for the sake of whatever they say, whether it be balance or anything, then there is a flipping problem, okay? Especially when they tell me that, uh, that they don't do that, especially when they tell me that I have ownership of my cards, okay? And I get it. If it's not an NFT and you didn't spend money to mint it, sure, I think the stats should change. On, on cards. Um, sure thing. You know, Guild Enforcer was a pretty pretty good card. Um, if they wanted to change that one, fine. But if you have two of these or three of these and you mint one and spend money to mint it, whatever stats the cards had at the time that you minted it, that's the ones that should keep. And if it happens to be overpowered, then it happens to be overpowered. That would mean that on the auction house, these cards would go for an absolute premium and not many people would have them because they wouldn't want to put up the, the money to actually have these cards in their deck. Now, would that mean that you're going to have these whales 
who have all of these impossible to get cards all in a deck. Sure. But how often are you actually going to run into somebody who has the money to spend on that? And if someone spent five, ten thousand dollars on their deck of cards, obviously, you know, they're going to have an advantage. <laughs> but they spent the money in it, right? I don't see that there's a problem with it. And as far as these game breaking balance issues where you have these setups that need to get nerfed, well, there isn't any reason that you couldn't um, create a card that would negate the benefits of the, of of some sort of uh, you know overpowered combination of cards. You would specifically create a card that's in there to deal with that, okay? And that's how you would deal with these things, not by making everybody's collections worthless, okay? By um, changing uh, the stats of these cards. And my particular problem here where I found out that this had happened was on this card, which is not a, <clears throat> this is a core card. It's not an expensive card. It's not even a particularly good card. Now this used to be a nature card that apparently got moved to death and I've never played death. So I don't know what that's all about, but this was a frontline card. That means that um, your opponents have to attack this first before they attack your other cards. And this has changed to heal the creature for the damage it deals, which is worthless. Um, but what it used to have was it would put a poison dot on anything that attacked it, or this card could attack itself, and you could put a poison dot on somebody. Now, that is incredibly useful in the nature deck. Nobody else really played it that I saw. I, I liked it. I have an NFT of this thing, and it got changed to where I can't even use it anymore. Can't even use it. I'm, I'm supposed to build a death deck now if I want to use this. What am I going to replace it, you know, in my nature deck? I wasn't given anything that's even remotely the same to use in my nature deck. But really the key point being is that it's an NFT and at, this is the auction house. And you notice that none of these um, blood worms are for nature, meaning that everybody's NFT that was in their wallet, all of these are on the auction house. You have to actually mint an NFT in order to put it on the auction house. And none of these are for nature. So it means all the stats changed. Gods Unchanged reached into your wallet and told you, you do not own anything that you mint in their game. They can change it at a moment's notice, on a whim. I would expect they could even take it out of your wallet if they wanted to. So these people have absolutely no clue what blockchain is about. And the people who play this game because, you know, they're gamers, they they don't understand blockchain either and they want to give me crap of course when i mention this on reddit because they don't understand they think that oh this is overpowered and the dev said they're going to be balancing all this and that and it's like no if you go to the uh the the home page for gods unchained it tells you about true ownership for players but see gamers they don't care okay that gamers don't care if they're having fun and they're invested in the game they don't want anyone to say that, hey, you guys, you're getting screwed, okay? So as an overall view for these kind of, this is the best blockchain game out there, by the way, that I've played. Um, Sandbox looks like it's really good, um, and that's going to be a big one. That's that's one that I've got some money in, and I hope it does very, very well. Um, but all of these other ones are garbage. The Central Land Mana looks like garbage. Um, these other ones that are out there, they're they're mostly garbage and this one was a full game it went it, it's so good that like i said i think that this game was meant to be released on something like steam or uh something like that to compete with blizzard but they're like hey well we can just build a crappy blockchain on top of this thing and call it play to earn when in reality it isn't there is no true ownership for players it's just the same as a you know a, a little ponzi uh, deal that Blizzard has going where you pay for their in-game currency, you pay gold or whatever it happens to be that they print out of thin air and you never actually own anything. Sure, you can swap back and forth with other people, but you know, you could have, you could spend three, four hundred dollars on your deck building it up and then a week later the devs put through a patch and turns your four hundred dollars into nothing. And that's, that's what it is. And I don't care about the monetary aspect at all in this game. I don't, really care about monetary aspect i care about fun and i care about playability and i care about if i invest time in something much like an mmo i expect my character to be the same what next time i log in i don't expect there to be wild sweeping changes in a thing where you're supposed to have true ownership okay 
true ownership. So this video is just out there as a warning to people looking at blockchain games and um, trying to get involved in the in, in the in the whole play to earn thing is you got to be wary that a lot of these guys are crumb bums who are running these games. Most of them are all just Ponzi's from what I've seen. I've looked at just about all of them. You know, crypto banter does a whole thing on all these different games and they're they're all terrible. And they all lose 90% of their value. I was wondering about Gods Unchained because I did have, you know, about $20 or $30 worth of Gods Unchained gold tokens, whatever they call them, Gods things or IMX or whatever it is. Um, and they lost 90% after crypto went down. And even after Bitcoin bounced back up to 40,000, these coins continued to lose value. And I'm like, what what's going on with this? And it's like, oh, the people who actually understand crypto who are actual investors understand that this is not a play to earn NFT true ownership game. This is just um, another another Blizzard Activision sort of a scam. I mean, not really a scam because they do offer, they do give you a game. It's just not something you should ever put one nickel of your money into. If you like these card games, by all means, you know, have have fun with it. But, you know, putting any money into this um, game beyond, you know, as any sort of an investment or anything like that, or trying to make money by minting cards and selling cards, it's, it's, it's not. It's a, it's a, it's a shell of what a blockchain game should be. Now as a card game, it's fine. As a card game, it's fine. If you like these type of games, it's it's decently fun. Um, they fixed a lot of problems they had with like bots and things like that. And yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's actually quite fun. But you know, I'm a little upset that you try to get involved in the, in the blockchain aspect of it and the NFT aspect of it. And it's no different than your, your AAA big title, who wants to nickel and dime you. Uh, out of you know out of your money and they and they print like i said they print their gods token out of nothing and their imx out of nothing there's no mining involved there's no nothing they just uh make a token of ethereum which anybody can do you know copy and paste ethereum and put a new name on it and that's that's their token and then they sell it to people which you know is is some would call that a security but um it's what you have to do when you when you first start up these things is just a little sad and a little, um, <clears throat> in my opinion, disgusting how people are not wise enough with how crypto works or how it's supposed to work that they don't call this out and call a spade for what it a spade a spade. And people actually who play this game are defending the idea that the gods unchained people can reach into your wallet and change your stuff. It's not that's not how NFTs blockchain and it certainly is not how immutable <laughs> should work. So that's what I have with that um, as far as for blockchain gaming. Like I said, at this at this point in time, there is really no reason to invest in anything unless you maybe personally know uh, the people that are working on the game and you have real, real inside knowledge of of what's going on or Perhaps if you're a huge fan of a particular genre or particular IP where you know you don't expect to see anything for your money, but you maybe just want to support the cause, sure. But if you want to go into these these gaming things with the idea that you're going to make money, please understand that you are 99% of the time going to get screwed, okay? It's, it's, it's just the state of the system as I see it. So guys, with that, watch out. Watch out for... Um, these sorts of things and you know <clears throat> know what know what you're getting into and if the claims that they make are actually true okay because they like i said they are making these trade uh, these claims true ownership for all players and that's a blatant lie okay that's a lie all right with that we're gonna be out of here